Earth is lost. You've been asleep for over 50 years. Welcome to 100 Days Genesis Part 2. I have a ship ready to take us to a space station. An ark that's a full living ecosystem. Do you think for a second that I am afraid to walk on your world and watch it crumble? Not if I can stop that. You might be our final hope. So join me as I navigate through this gigantic ship to save humanity. And if you enjoy this, please leave a like as it really helps me reach a larger audience. I woke up on day one in a strange pod and saw a message from Dr. Newman. Kruger, if you wake up, I'll be back in about 10 days. Now, knowing me, I'm not gonna sit back and wait here for him. I wanted to go exploring. So I made my way outside and that's when I quickly saw I wasn't on an island. I was on a gigantic spaceship. So I made my way over to the nearest mission terminal to start off this 100 day in style and improve the loot quality with Circuit Chase. And she wasn't lying, these things were pretty cool. So I completed the race on Gamma and then went for Beta, but this was more like an obstacle course to be honest. Um, I just said that HLNA. Anyway, I proceeded with Beta and finally made it to the finish line, confident enough to take on Alpha next. And boy, was my jumps on cue by this point. I was navigating through this course with perfect execution. I mean, this was still my first run. I dropped down the final drop zone, teleported through just in the nick of time and made it across the finish line with time to spare. After the race I spotted some new creatures and this is probably a good time to tell you, I threw 5 new creature mods in here so I would challenge myself with taming 10 new creatures I had no idea what they were. But anyway, we got back to the mission grind immediately after, as I went for one of the missions I knew I was going to hate the most, Downriver Run. Um, so do we get a victory now, Gamma is quite easy, no one's and so is Beta, but when it comes to this thing, oh, one single mistake will cost you to lose this mission, like there's just no room for error. If you're not making it over the finish line, you're crashing into the borders. So I even got some help as I had already failed 10 times. I brought in the expert opinions of Jacko the Traveler. No, 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 it's again a second to... As he watched my stream while I was completing this and after some training, coaching and a lot of practice, I was milking the hell out of this canoe. I finally had the perfect route and made it over with a few milliseconds to spare. I then wanted to show Jacko some of the new creatures. I'm sorry, I just wanted to show you. But one of the carnivores wasn't too happy. New time? I think so, I'm not sure. I then continued exploring around, looking for base location, but got a bit distracted. Look at this thing's eyes. Like a torch and finally had a nearby location where I decided I would set up. So I unlocked some engrams, purchased a few basic items, dropped myself a few stone foundations, as well as some forges, mortar and pestles, a smithy and started making narcotic. I then made my way over to some loot drops since the Genesis loot can be amazing. And since I was only waiting for me to spoil, this was probably a great way of killing some time. And even if you get encumbered from all the loot, you can simply punch yourself into the air. So having this federation tech suit was pretty amazing. I finally had the narcotic that I needed, made myself a crossbow and I was ready to go knock out my first tame. And of course it had to be the torch thingy. But bolas weren't working so I had to go to a nearby edge and knock it out instead. I finally started shooting it with some arrows but somehow it died. At least its light was still shining. 
but I decided to stick to more familiar things for now. So, next up was Starwing Strike. Another race mission, but this time with a dolphin with jetpack strapped on its back. After completing Gamma and Beta, I decided I was brave enough to go for Alpha. But of course, some allos nearly got in my way as they were camping the terminal. But luckily, even though I was over encumbered, my tech suit saved me and I was able to guide them off the mountain, and then went for Alpha. Now, the time you get for this mission is more than enough. Your biggest issue is to make sure you stay alive, but boy was I a good pilot. Thanks Elena, I'll try that, especially when you get glitched into the wall for no apparent good reason. But luckily I managed to recover it. I know, I know I really am. And finally made it across the finish line. And a load of time to spare. I then made my way back to base as I now had enough points to get everything I need for taming. Monkey. But of course we had to get this little friend first. And I named him Valvatine. Once that was done, I started making some gunpowder but realized I couldn't unlock darts yet, so I would have to rely on arrows instead. I then tracked myself down another light thingy, but he went down into the water where he nearly got stuck. Finally, I was able to get the final shot in and killed him again. So I decided to go for these fish raptors instead. It was at this moment Kruger knew he fucked up. Once I bowled them, I quickly realized my mistake. These guys were passive tames and they definitely didn't like getting bowled in the face. So I got some meat, took care of the local wildlife and I started taming one. I hopped into the local water pond to grab myself some fish, but some piranhas were nearby to nip on my butt. But finally I tamed myself up my very first new creature and I named him Astro. I then made the saddle and took Astro back to base. On the morning of day 7, I went picking up some eggs. It felt like I was on a local farm and the chickens were really producy. Oh howdy there partner. Of course I had to take care of the sarka that were bullying these little chickens and I decided I would tame this instead. Her boyfriend tried to protect her but finally she went down and I fed her some meat. I then went to grab some drops to kill some time as I waited for my sarko and I discovered these amazing creatures. I didn't know what they were, I just knew I wanted one. I then ran away from the little Chewbacca's, grabbed myself some more loot, and I found an amazing fabricated sniper, and I also spotted this guy. It was practically the Walmart version of a Spino, as it required you to passively feed it some meat. But halfway through, I remembered I still had a Sarko knocked out. So I rushed back, but it was nowhere to be seen, so it had either woken up or died. I then went back to the Walmart Spino and finished up taming. And on my way back to base, I spotted another light thingy, and hey, what do you know, it was a passive tame as well. So I finished the tame and named it Tesla, and that was already 3 out of 10 for my goal of taming new creatures. I then went to the mission called Slide and Light. After completing Gamma, Beta and Alpha, I then threw out my new tames, unlocked the saddles and purchased everything that I needed to make it for them. I then spent the rest of the day going loot crate hunting yet again. This tech suit saved me so many times. I even got some amazing wreck saddles and by the end of day 8 I was feeling pretty accomplished. Now I just needed one of these things. Day 9 brought me a lot of luck as I got amazing loot and spotted my first potential Rex. That Rex and call it bar. Now of course I had to satisfy Jacko. I then demolished the platform for some materials and spoiled yeah. some meat. But narcotics were too expensive and I needed a tame to gather up berries. That looks like a cool one. Yeah. Just bow down to me little wookie. Luckily this guy was a Hot passive Rod. tame so I named him Hot Rod and started farming up some berries in the hope to get strawberry seeds as I finally learned this is what you need to tame up a Chewbacca. So of course I dropped down a crop pot, grabbed some nearby poop and started growing my very own strawberries. While I wanted to kill some time waiting for the narcotics, I went to do yet another mission. Now basically you gotta sail around on a hoverboard and do some tricks to get yourself some speed boost. 
After completing Gamma, Beta and Alpha, I made my way back and knew my narcotics would be ready to go. I then started making some trank darts and I made my way to the wrecks yet again. Hopefully it would still be there. Finally I tracked it down and started placing down my metal billboards to trap it in. After getting the wrecks trapped up, I no, saw the wolves were busy on? attacking it and on? I needed to try and save wolves. it. Luckily, Walmart, Walmart was there saving. for the rescue. Unfortunately, oh, I didn't see the last one. You're kidding me. I guess I won't be impressing Dr. Newman by having a Rex already on day 10. But I was out of time and I was supposed to meet him. So I made my way over and please warmly welcome Nettie the Noodle. Hey, what's up, Doc? Kruger, good. You're here. Are you sure you weren't followed? Followed? What do you mean? Followed by who exactly? Fool! We're not alone here. Why'd you even leave the pod? Doc, I'm sorry, I really didn't... No? What the hell? What's going on? Doc, I'm sorry, what's going on? They're here. Who are they? Who's here? Doc, what the hell's going on? Dr. Newman, we have you surrounded. Come out now with your hands up. Sizens, minions. Kroger, what you remember of Sizen... Well, a lot has changed. He made it on our ship, on our Ark, our last chance to save humanity and all Earth's creatures. We brought all the species we could find, some you might even have never seen before. Yeah, I kind of noticed that, but Doc, what do they want? Time's up, Doc. Goons engage! Doc, we don't have a lot of time. This force is not going to last. What happened to Sizen? Well, he came with an army and set up camp near the engines. A war broke out, and since the engines were nuclear, let's just say during a standoff, one suffered a meltdown and caused some serious mutations. Sizen probably got it the worst. He was mutated and fused inside the ship's main control room. Since then, the evil corruption has spread over half the ship. What can we do? How can we stop them? Kruger. I've told you back on Earth, you are our only hope! That makes no sense, Doc. How do you even know that? Why me? What should I do? I've seen many possible futures. You gonna tell me now you're psychic or something? On this ship, there is a device that allows time travel. So, how many futures did you see? Well, around 420,000. How many did we win? One. Well, we're just gonna have to make sure that this is that one and we make this fight count. Doc, I think we need to fall back. The forest field is about to go. Oh, no! Kruger! Track down the remaining survivors on the ship. But be careful. They will all be looking for you too. I also saw readings of a life form with your exact DNA match. Kruger, go. Doc, I can't leave you. It's too late for me. Doc! There's a small hatch on the roof. I'll hold them off. The Doc sacrifice bought me just enough time to make a quick getaway. I was tailed by one of the goons, but I managed to hide down in a bush until the heat cooled down, and I made a quick run back to base to grab my things. We interrupt your current program to bring you a brief ad. If you enjoyed the scene with the goons as well as the many more to come, be sure to join my Discord and an awesome community where you will get a chance to feature yourself. I can't wait to get paid. Yeah, I know. For every 1000 likes it's like 100 bucks each, right? Wait a second. You guys are getting 100? Kruger promised me 50. Wait. You guys are getting paid? Now, a huge thank you to each and every name that you see on screen. You guys have played an awesome part and I really appreciate all your efforts. Thank you goons and please like this video so they can hopefully get paid. Now back to regular viewing. The next day I grabbed my tames and went back to the scene of the crime to investigate what went down after I left. I spotted one of the goons running away like a coward and I went to see if Dr. Newman made it. At least he managed to take down a bunch of the goons, but now I knew I needed to go into hiding. 
So after grabbing some nearby loot, I searched around for a more discreet base location when I stumbled upon this amazing cave and I knew this would be a place where the goons wouldn't find me. So I grabbed some more loot the next day when I spotted a Quetzal that could definitely make the move a lot easier. So I trapped it up since it was being weird and flying down to the ground and then I remembered I had a tech suit I could easily just fly around encumbered with all my materials. Finally I made it back to the Quetzal with my trank arrows and knocked it out. By the evening I punched out a Sarko to grab some meat for the Quetzal but wolves beat me to it. The next morning however I realized that Quetzal for some reason wasn't getting bitten by them but I got distracted with this nearby high level Rex and I knew Dr. Newman would be proud if I finally got my first Rex. I then uncryoed Walmart to take care of all the nasties in the area that is until an acro came and I was forced to engage to try and save the Quetzal. Come on Walmart got this? Surprisingly I actually won the fight so I fed the Quetzal some narcotics and went searching for more prime meat but then I spotted even another high level Rex and I knew I had to have this as well. So I started tranking him out until his acro buddy nearly slaughtered me from the side and even a second time as I was dropping down to eat some meat. But I had also ran out of trank darts at this time so I grabbed my first Rex and made my way back to base. I saw my Quetzal ended up either dying or waking up but there was no point crying over it. I went back to the 145 and proceeded knocking it out. It finally went down and I went with Walmart to grab some mutton as well as being lucky enough to grab an industrial grinder. After feeding the Rex I spotted another male and I knew Ark was definitely being on my side for once so I started knocking it out but my gear broke and raptors nearly ended my life. Luckily I managed to get in the air and I had to repair my bow yet another time. I knew the Rex was so close to going out since it was already trying to run away but that is until my controller cut out and I dropped right in front of a saber nearly ending my life yet again. Finally I cryoed up the other Rex as it tamed up, went back to base, replenished all my gear yet another time and I knocked out the male. I spotted some weird owls that were belly up for some reason. This was really very interesting to see. And after all of that I was even more lucky and got an industrial grinder. Now all this useless loot can be grinded up. After feeding the wreck some mutton I went exploring around for some more loot until finally making it back that evening. Now I had three rexes and I could start breeding but to kill some time we're gonna do one of my favorite missions. Luckily this is the team downriver run which means it's a lot easier than the solo one. Finally I made it back to base, dropped down all my new farming goodies and I was able to grind down all the loot that I no longer needed. I then started getting myself some plumbing going but of course I needed a Fiomia as well. Finally I knocked it out, tamed it up and my pooping machine named Fartisha was producing all the poop I would need to grow some strawberry. I also wanted to start making some AC so I made my way over to grab some pearls just in the nick of time as it turned to midnight. Finally I went to the underwater cavity, grabbed myself a ton of pearls that is until a giant Moser spotted me. Luckily I was able just to boost away and get away from it. Once I made it back to base I made some electronics, got my Rexes to start breeding and made everything that I would need to hatch the eggs which included a generator and placing down the ACs. I started up the Jenny and finally had my first batch of babies. I gave them appropriate names and demolished some cliff flats that I got in drops to get material for a nanny. Click the nanny, click the, click the nanny. I'm gonna make your life hell of a lot easier. Click it. Yeah. And now look at the top of your screen on the left hand side. There's a little square with arrows pointing in. Yeah. Click that. Oh my god. After natural causes changed my life I placed down the nanny and of course I had to make it look like me so they wouldn't be confused to who is their mother. After picking up some Rex eggs as well as dodo eggs I dropped everything off in the fridge and it was probably time to get back to the mission grind. So Star Dolphin was up next, definitely by far one of my most favorite missions. He's on to you by now. 
So he's probably left some monstrosity in here to guard his prize. I got some serious deja vu when I saw it was the master controller that kicked my ass back on Gen 1. So I was definitely feeling nervous, but confident to take this guy down. Now, Gamma again was super easy. Beta was somewhat more challenging, but we made it through with no problem at all and finally had to take on Alpha next. Now, I had one of two strategies. Either I would keep all my grenades for the skiffs or save them for the end boss fight. So, round one, I took out the skiffs as quick as possible to make sure the Astro survived, but I didn't. So I knew it would be better to use all the grenades for the last end fight. I made it through with a ton of grenades. So much that after the second wave, I was close to having 30 of them. Now, I just needed to focus on my power-ups to take out the meteors as well as the skiffs. I definitely got a bit nervous towards the end and decided I would use some grenades as the last thing that I needed now was the Astro to die before I make it through. And hey, I had over 40 grenades so I was definitely chilling. Finally I made it to the end boss fight but noticed I had no power ups so I quickly ran around to grab the boost that I needed and started to engage. And time to drop some bombs, as I could drop more than 15 grenades on every single wave. I definitely feel the mission was so much in my favor. Every time I needed a power up or health, it was there for me. Things were really going in my favor. Finally I was down to the final stage as I dropped all the grenades I had left. And just as it ran out, of course a boost was waiting right in front of his face. Revenge for all the suffering back on Genesis Part 1. On the morning of day 23, I made my way back to base. I grabbed some more festive candies and threw out the Rexes. I then put Fartisha in the top to continue making poop and continued working on babies. I also made a bunch of narcotic, some simple ammo to level up because I still had a long way to go on my XP. So I decided to kill off all the runs as well as this was a great way of getting XP. But for some reason Fartisha ended up dying so I think she couldn't stomach all the baby killing. Well either that or she ended up starving to death because I wasn't feeding them. Well, I then came up with a much better way to farm up some XP by slaughtering some alphas. I did get a little bit into trouble as Walmart is definitely not built for killing alphas. So I decided to help him out a bit and luckily they got a bit more distracted and focused on a stego and I was able to shoot the alpha with my pistol and get all the XP myself. By the end of the evening I continued making a ton of narcotics and finally unlocked a chemistry bench. Now on day 25, I grinded up everything that I needed, made myself the chem bench and dropped it down. Now drug making would become a lot quicker. So that's exactly what I decided to start focusing on. But some weird noise caught my attention as I spotted the strange scout drone in the air. This was no wild scout. It was like it was trying to tell me something trying to get me to follow it, so that's what I ended up doing and it led me to a strange room and once I went inside, I spotted a surveillance system, so I had to check out what this little guy was trying to tell me. I saw some strange structures off in the distance and then people running all around. That had to be Sizen's goons and someone was in the cage, so I'm pretty sure this guy was trying to get me to go and save him. So that would be exactly what I would focus on, as I wanted to prepare all the loot, level myself up so I could make fabricator bullets, 
by killing up some more alphas. And of course, this guy had to die. He was copying my colors. So after slaughtering up the Alpha Rex, I finally reached the levels that I needed to to unlock sniper bullets. I made all the bullets that I needed to go and save my strange friend, made myself some smoke grenades as well as some med brews just in case the resistance is a bit too heavy and finally I made my way over. But for some reason when I stepped into this room my tech suit was no longer working so I was gonna have to do this fight on foot. I was definitely outnumbered, but I had the high ground, so I started to engage. It wasn't long for them to start advancing on my location, and in no time I was spotted. I knew I had to retreat to a different location, so I made my way to the opposite side of the roof. I know, I heard something. Keep patrolling, maybe you will find him. But it wasn't long before another opportunity presented itself to shoot some more goons. I then saw some of them were making it to the top of the roof and I knew I was about to be made. I had to fall back. And I went with a different approach but I was quickly spotted. Hey, there is someone here. Who's up? Taking one of them out meant I was in trouble. They were all advancing to this location, but I could use that as my advantage. As they went to check out the body, I was able to take out yet another. I had to fall back some more in order to make sure I don't get overcome by them. And finally, I had one of them run out of ammo, and he was pretty much a sitting duck. I knew it wouldn't be long before his friends would come looking for him, so I just waited, ready to engage. The goons were falling left, right and center. I was down to the final few. My aim was horrible on close range, so I decided to use my electric prod and chased forward. But somehow, this guy died already. Maybe he died of laughter from how many shots I missed. And finally I had a clear run to go and save the prisoner. And with that all the goons were taken out and now please warmly welcome the next guest, Vino. Thanks for saving me. So you're the one called Kruger I assume. Um yeah, how, how did you know? The doc told me about you before these bloody goons kidnapped me. Uh, speaking of which, we should probably move to a more discreet location to have a talk. No worries, Kruger. Plus, let me just turn this back on. There we go. All my defenses are active again. They must have just snuck in once the Jenny ran out. I'm Engineer McDonald. You may also call me the Tinkerer. Where is Dr. Newman? Um, you might want to follow me inside, because you're gonna want to sit down for this. Sizen's men attacked us a few days back, and the doctor kind of gave his life so I could get away. What? No, it can't be. I'm sorry to be the bearer of this bad news. I guess there is no time to mourn. We need to make sure his sacrifice is not in vain. You see, Kruger, I have been recruited as the ship's main engineer. All these robotic AI creatures are my creation. That's impressive. Well, it's an honor to meet you. And, um, recruited by who? We don't really know his name. We refer to him as Captain Noah. Since this whole Ark ship was his project. Is he still alive? Is he on the ship? That's hard to say. Most of us were supposed to be asleep in our pods until we reached the destination. It must have been a malfunction since me and some others woke up early. So why were Sizen's men holding you hostage? Since I learned about the corruption on the other half of the ship, I've activated a failsafe protocol, separating the ventilation system of the ship's two halves. Well I mean that was definitely some smart thinking, but that still doesn't explain what do they want with you? Well, the system requires a lot of element to run. Without it, it's a mere matter of time before the corruption spreads to this side of the ship. I am the one maintaining the fuel levels using my AI program Striders. So how can I help you? 
Well, I need you to venture to space once we reach our next jump and gather some mutagen. I believe if we feed them this, we should be able to hack the computers. So with my new assignment, I made my way to see that it was actually white drops which meant mutagel in space. I got ready to take one small step for man, one giant leap for Kruger Ops, as I leaped into space for the very first time. It didn't take me long to find the little rocks and whale poop that would give me mutagel, so I spent the rest of the day farming up as much as I could and finally the ship jumped to a new location. I had everything that I needed and I was ready to go tame my first ever strider. Finally I found one but it was too high of a level and I didn't have enough missions done. So after searching around the whole day I found some interesting new birds and I definitely wanted to check it out when I saw this little cute adorable guy running up to me. But unfortunately he also needed honey to tame so for now this would have to wait. I then continued searching around for a strider when luck would have it I ended up finding a beehive. So I grabbed myself some honey and I thought I might as well try to tame the queen bee as this way I didn't have to worry about honey at all for the rest of the playthrough. So after eating some rare flour and trying to get all the bees lured away, I ended up luring a strider to me. And it was the perfect one since it was a farming one and the level was low enough for me to commence the hacking. I proceeded hacking the strider and finally I had it tamed. Now this strider was pretty badass, I definitely knew I wanted one for myself at one stage or another, but for now I had to go and drop this one off as I saw the engineer was busy packing up apparently. Finally I moved the strider closer, hopped off to give the engineer his strider. Now at least the corruption for this half of the ship won't occur. Kruger, well done, the doc was right, you might just be the one shot we have. I suggest you track down the ship's cook next. Here's our informant on the other side. We have lost communication with him a few days back. All I know is Sizen is planning something big and he knows more. We can find him somewhere in the northeast side of the ship. Since my honey ended up spoiling, I luckily found another one. I decided I wanted to make an S plus hive, so I spent the rest of the day gathering up loot to kill some time so I could continuously go back and grab some more honey. And by that evening I was already halfway towards the goal. So the next morning the same process would continue, although I did discover another gigantic pile of eggs that I had to grab first and of course save the dodos from all the nearby sarcos. I continued grabbing myself some honey and I thought I might as well try and tame up the bee. So I made myself some bug repellent, tamed myself up the queen bee and finally was successful. I now had my very first beehive. But I also had enough honey so I grabbed the remaining rare flowers that I needed and I was now able to make myself a primitive plus one as well. Now the honey production can really start. And on day 34 I made my first honey covered strawberries and with this I would finally be able to tame my very own Chewbacca's. I did get a little bit stuck in them because they were sliding all over the place but finally I managed to get myself freed up and started taming them up. Even though this one had cool colors I grabbed the nearby male as well since he was a max level. I finally tamed up the first one and shortly thereafter the male making it my fourth tame of the additional creatures. But this also made me really want a carnivore and what other carnivore better than the acro. So I went looking around for some jellyfish and shot them from on top of the water to grab myself the biotoxin that I would need to tame one. Finally I cryoed up my rex and went clearing out all the nearby nasties in the hope to tame my very first acro. I slowly moved the rex away, grabbed the fabby that I needed, went looking around and heard that gorgeous roar behind me but unfortunately I ended up killing the acro before I could even get it into the roar. So on day 36 I decided it's time to start focusing on missions yet again. I still had a long way to go and what better 
to start training up some rexes than hunting some feroxes. So I followed up some footprints and finally managed to track myself down the ferox and got ready for taking it down. But I kind of forgot that this guy had the ability to dismount you. And luckily I had some super quick reflexes and made it back on but only to get dismounted directly after. So I knew this was one fight I couldn't take part of. So I threw out another Rex and they made it through and finally we were on the final stage of fighting the Ferox. I had three of my Rexes out and I got them to engage on the target. In no time they took him down as well as his little minion army. I knew I would be strong enough to take on Beta as well. I also spotted some Dino Candy so I fed my strongest Rex the Dino Candy and put the base saddle on him ready to take on the Ferox yet again. Unfortunately just as the first wave ended so did my first Rex and the second one was also getting super bloody but I managed to drop down and save him as the wave was over. We marched onto the final stand and now I would just have to hope and pray that between my Rex and my Fabby firing from on top we can take this beast down. It was definitely a super close fight. The Rex managed to take down the Ferox and in its last little bit of health took down the minions as well. So on day 37 I repaired all my fabricators and it was time for me to go after an acro yet again. I knew I needed something stronger to take on Alpha and the Rexes are just not gonna cut it. But taming acros was a lot more difficult than what I thought. That is until I spotted this guy and boy was he a beauty. So I would try my luck at one more acro before I would go back to get the narcotics. But sure as hell my fabby ended up breaking and the acro was super bloody so I knew these guys were not gonna be tamed easy. And when I found in a drop an ascendant giga saddle I knew I had to get to work. I had to farm up all the narcotics that I needed that is until Rexus spotted me. And I was in trouble. I had to abandon ship. Kruger, you asshole, why you leave me? Unfortunately, there was nothing I could do. Hot Rod was lost. But his sacrifice would not go in vain. I had the narcotics that I needed, the trap that I needed, and finally was ready to bring in my first Giga. He wasn't paying too much attention so I used Walmart to drag him over. And yes, mistakes were made. Walmart was just not outrunning him and I knew if I stayed on top of him I would die so I had to abandon ship yet again. Kruger why you do me like that? I am going to die now. It actually did break my heart leaving this guy behind. He was one of the OGs and if I had died along with him this journey would have ended. So his sacrifice would not be in vain. As by the morning of day 39 the Giga went down, I collected the prime meat and fed it to the Giga and spent the entire day waiting around, gazing at the stars and by the evening the Giga tamed up. So that evening I made my way back to base with a heavy heart from losing Walmart. But now I had some serious firepower as I cryoed up all my Rexes and made my way over to run the Velo Stalk mission. So I could get the Giga leveled up and make him ready to take on the Ferox. I started tracking the footsteps even though it led into the water this Giga made quick work of this little army. So I dealt with Gamma as well as Beta, grabbed myself a nearby explorer note so I would get boosted XP while I ran Alpha. But I got a little bit sidetracked when I spotted an Alpha Rex nearby and of course I had to take him down first so I would get that much added XP. Finally I made my way to the final stage of the Velos and let's just say these guys were an absolute walk in the park. I made quick work of taking all of them down and this mission was really a walk in the park. Not just that, it gave pretty good loot and also 33,000 points. So of course I was gonna keep farming it until I couldn't farm it anymore. I then made my way back to base after healing up the Giga and spotted another Alpha Rex. So I decided to make myself the Easter Bunny outfit and crack some eggs in the hope to get a decent chibi. 
Now, why a chippy, you might ask? Well, this increases your maximum level if you've got it leveled up. I then spent the rest of day 42 continuously farming Velo Stalk and healing up the Giga at the end. I continued this process throughout day 43 and by day 44 I had run this mission nearly 9 times which meant I now have a total of 260,000 points, more than enough to get things done. So I made my way back to base, grinded up all the unnecessary loot and dropped myself down a vault as well as a loadout mannequin so I could start rearranging all my gear and grind up all the useless junk that I would no longer need. I then had a quick look of all the loot crates that I could buy and I got some pretty decent flak from it. I had an amazing chest piece and I was now one step closer to having some OP flak. Next up was Shadow Main Prowl and finally I named the Giga. I named him Neptune because he had slain so many of them in the earth as well as in the water. After completing Gamma I immediately went to Alpha and slaughtered the Shadow Mains with no issues at all. Neptune was an absolute god and at this point had leveled over 280 and was just beaming through these missions at amazing rates. And finally I took on Alpha and this guy was definitely a little bit more tanky. It took me quite a bit of time but finally I had him done and I continued following through until the final stage of the mission. Now at this point I should have probably reminded myself that Gigas have got rage meters and I was not paying attention to mine at all and I nearly got killed by Neptune himself but I wasn't gonna let yet another tame die, I knew I needed to save him. So I made it rain with all the Rexes that I had in my inventory to try and save my buddy but I was too late. Neptune was lost but I was not gonna give up, I was gonna give this fight everything that I had in order to avenge my fallen friend. I dropped down one final Rex gave it everything that I had and we were down to the final shadow main and finally we had victory. But it truly came at a price. All these losses were just getting too much so I had to say goodbye to all my fallen friends that I have lost so far. I dropped them down some flowers and said goodbye to them but I got interrupted by yet another weird drone thingy. He dropped me down some form of packages so I went over to investigate and see what it was. It was a note as well as a radio from Baker? That can't be. Um, Kruger Ops standing by, over. What? Kruger? I know that name. Baker, is that really you? We, we met on Aberration many years ago, do you remember? Kruger, my golly, who would have ever thought our paths would cross again? Oh no! What, what are you doing here? What are you doing on this ship? How's Elena? Um, I got your note. You needed help with something? It's probably best we don't discuss too much over the radio. Kruger, prepare all your best Trank weapons and meet me in three days at midnight by the terminal near you. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just kind of in the middle of something, saying goodbye to some fallen friends, but... Yeah, okay, I'll see what I can do. So after that, I made my way over to tame myself up a bunch of overs in the hope to have some fluffy friends would cheer me up, as well as go for an acro that just ended in some more death, and some more death, and even this gorgeous 150, some more death. So I knew I needed to surround myself with something more positive. Now since the baker wanted me to do some form of tranking things with him, I thought what better way to practice my tranking skills than going for some of the tranking missions. So I started with Bulb Dog Fetch. Now a quite an easy strategy here. After you rush the enemies and manage to take them out, you hop off and place a net on top of the Bulb Dogs. You can then go safely inside and trank them out so they can't run away. After completing Gamma, which was super easy, I decided to go for another tranking mission, which was Parasur Randa. I had a bit of a weird glitch as they literally appeared right next to the mission terminal before I even started tracking the footprints. So I managed to trank out and net a whole bunch of them, 
and it only took me to the second wave to get the final one, tranked and nated. I then went for the final of the tranking missions which is the Maywing one and Rare Flowers is an easy way to get this mission done that is until the footprints goes into the mesh. So I still had some time to kill and decided to tame up one of these thingies as I still had quite a bit of tames needed on the additional creatures. Finally I had him stuck. He went down and I fed him some berries. I restocked all the narcotics that I needed and started making the darts but quickly ran out of metal. So after grinding up some mats I was able to continue. I bought myself some loot crates but got a bunch of useless junk aside from the turret that could hopefully defend me. My fifth new tame tamed up and I named him Gregory, made my way back and bought one final loot crate and boy was I lucky as I got two industrial forges which mean I could demolish one and have a ton of metal. Now I just had one more debt to settle before I wanted to go and meet the baker and that was Alpha Ferox. So I named all the Rexes for Neptune and I marched them straight to the Ferox as I provided cover fire with a shotgun but in no time the Rexes started falling. I was literally down to one final Rex as it was on the run so I knew this was a mission I was just not ready for. But I had to redeem my ego as I spotted a stuck alpha. But of course as soon as I got there he was no longer stuck and of course it was raining acros as well so I was being double teamed by these guys and somehow I dismounted. Luckily I got away and I was able to shoot them with a shotgun and finally went to meet the baker. So please warmly welcome the return of Dread. Kruger you son of a gun you haven't aged a day, how have you been? Baker man it's good to see you. Yeah, I was kind of stuck in a simulation for the last 50 years, so clearly I missed out on a lot. How are you? How's Elena? Sounds like one of the docs experiments. Well, Kruger, after our path split, Helena and Hunter took refuge in your old home. Things were going well. One day they found a baby, an orphan they took in. Seems there were some people after the baby and it ended in a bloody massacre. Now let's just say not too long after, those same people came after them. Oh no, tell me they're okay at least. I was making my way over for my monthly visit and that's when I saw people attacking them. So wait, you didn't even get a chance to see them? Before I could do anything to help, I was made and those goons came after me. Did you manage to catch who it was? Boss? Standing by? Boss? I'm sorry they got away. Ah, oh, you idiots! Seems I need to do everything myself. Well, it turns out those guys worked for Sizen the Emperor. What about Hunter? Did you ever find him? And you mean Sizen the Terrible? I have no idea where Hunter was at the time. After the hit, Helena was nowhere to be seen. Sizen the Terrible. Yes, I think that's what he was called back on Earth. He made it on this ship. I've been here trying to infiltrate the control room and shut this place down before his evil can spread to another world. So how can I help? See, Kruger, the opposite side of the ship is fully corrupted. And not just that they've uploaded some transmission that fully disables our suits from working. It's a very hostile environment. I've seen the goons manage to get their hands on some space dolphins and I need your help to do the same. There are a bunch of tranquilizing missions that has a high chance of rewarding saddles, and if we have higher armor saddles, we'll have a fighting chance. Since you're not experienced enough yet to use a tech bow, I'll do the tranking. You protect the tames and take care of the netting. Well, <laughs> that seems fitting. You were always trying to knock me out, so sounds like a plan. Let's do this. Seeing as it was nighttime, we started with Bulb Dog Fetch on beta first. Baker would focus on tranking. Kruger, quick, this one's ready. And I would focus on trying to kill enemies as well as netting all the bulb dogs that are ready to go. Just a few more to go. By the morning of day 51, we grabbed the final bulb dog and finally completed the mission. Next up was Paris Roundup. I would focus the Rexes, but at least here my long necks helped a little bit. Nice, excellent work. We knocked another one out of the park and decided to go for Alpha. The Rexes were a little bit more tanky. Ruger, quick, this one's ready! But as long as no of your adults die, it's quite an easy mission. On the final wave, we finally got the last two down. 
And another one was in the bag. We then went with Maywink Poach and I wanted to try a cool trick of eating some rare flowers. And boy did this work amazing. The Thylos and Wolves weren't even attacking the Maywings. So we could simply stand on the edge and one by one trank and net them as they were ready to go. We completed Beta and decided to immediately go for Alpha thereafter. Our trick still worked brilliantly and on the third wave we completed all the Maywings. Now we just had probably the toughest one of them all left, Alpha Bulb Dog. But I tried to use my same trick and I would keep all the enemies focused on me or lure them off edges. Cougar, watch out! Well, yeah, I got this I one. Say I tried to. Net that Bulb Dog! Baker was amazing at tranking and finally we had the final Bulb Dog down. Nice, excellent work. Awesome, we got saddles. Now let's go tame ourselves some fighter jets. So we made our way to the space and I tamed the dolphin up for the Baker. Kruger, thanks for all your help. Baker, give me a few days. I can help you take him down. Every day that goes by is another he's alive and my daughter is not. Sorry, Kruger, I can't wait any longer. I need answers. And with that, me and the Baker parted ways. I went through all the useless loot that I wasn't going to use and grinded it up. I then dropped the two good blueprints that I found and I finally had some somewhat decent flak. Good leggings and good gloves at least, so my set was slowly coming together. I then found a deadly box in a storage crate and I knew I now wanted a strider of my own. But when I couldn't find one on this side of the map, I decided to go to the other side of Eden. I spotted the first 100 level one and started taming it up. But this idiot kept getting himself into trouble as he walked into a nearby lake and threw me down into the water into the mouth of an acro and I barely got out with my life. So this is one friend I definitely didn't want. The next morning I found another one so I started the taming process yet again. He was finally near to 60% and then he walked into the waters as well. So I killed the nearby Rexes, hopped back on his back and I waited for him to pass through the length so I could continue taming. But this guy was an idiot. He kept getting him stuck inside the channel, never moving forward and every time he gets a gap, he rather walks over to the other side. Kind of like the Ever Given in the Swiss Canal. So finally, by that evening, he got himself free and I was able to start the final hack. After nearly a day and a half, finally I had myself, my very own Strider all tamed up and at least I had the name inspiration already done. But now it was time for the longest journey back of my life as I had tamed this guy in the wrong side of the map. The problem was there was no way to go up. So I had to put my big brain to use and I made myself a ton of pillars and finally by that evening I had the mega ramp constructed. The way up did end up breaking the strider's leg but hey it still worked and finally I made it back to base. And of course there was another strider right there. But fine. I had what I came for and it was time for me to test this bad boy out as I went on my very first metal run with him and boy did this strider get a lot of metal. My forge was more than halfway filled up. I then decided to make myself some med brews and grabbed all the rex eggs that I had gathered up so I could start working on some breeding lines. I hatched up all the babies and got them into a more appropriate area to go through the stats. And while I waited for them to raise up, I decided to go loot crate hunting on day 60. Day 60 did the same, and then on day 62 I wanted to fight a whole bunch of alphas in the hope to get my chibi leveled up, that in the case I reach max level, I could go a little bit further. Then on day 63 I made this guy, a 140 alpha rix. But this guy was the biggest little scaredy cat I had ever met. Every time we would get into a little bit of a tussle, he would run away. I had never seen something like it. It took him to get one of his friends to get himself stuck inside my butt before he would finally properly engage. Luckily my bites were still reaching even though they were fighting from behind and I managed to take down the Rex as well as his two buddies. 
By the time I got back to base, I threw out my wreck so he could heal up again and my babies were coming along nicely. But it was time for me to now finally go take down the Ferox. I then took all the runs that I had raised, the ones that I wouldn't use in the breeding line going forward. I had over 13 rexes. Of course, this was gonna be a walk in the park. Finally, I could take this guy down. But then, he started going through my army quicker than what I ever thought was possible. I had no idea why. The last time he wasn't this tough. What the hell was going on? 13 Rexes were falling like it was nothing. They had over 30k health. They weren't super leveled, but I mean, this guy shouldn't be this strong. So I cancelled the mission and managed to at least save one of the Rexes and decided to do a different mission because my ego just took a massive beating. So I got all my gear together and went for Gamma. Choose your own adventure. Now after completing all the different color coded puzzles, you get to fight a massive summoner. Now luckily Gamma was super easy and I was definitely feeling a little bit better after that. Of course, this Kano wouldn't have that. On day 66, it was time for me to really start working on some more missions and knocking them out. I really needed to train myself to become as strong as possible. I mean, I can't get bullied by things like Feroxes. So of course, Survive the Ark is one of the most fun and most challenging missions that there is to improve your skills as a survivor. I used the Gamma mission to train up all the different kind of weapons that I could possibly use in here in the prep for when I eventually do beta and alpha and it was really fun playing around with all the different options all the different weapons and get the combination that I think would work best finally I was done repaired all my gear and bought myself some more gunpowder so I could replenish all my ammo because of course code red was up next so I fought my way through the maze, through the turrets, nearly getting slaughtered and dropping down to take down all the defense units. Once they were dealt with, I had to protect some biopods and shortly after, run for my life from biopods that would have creatures inside that try to take you down. These were really, really fun to do on Gamma because it gives you such a nice feeling for how the mission is. Finally, I made it to the final end room, and that's when I saw this monstrosity. A giant giga, corrupted and spitting acid on me. This was definitely going to be a challenge in Alpha. I then went to see what life support was all about. Another color code puzzle where you gotta go through a maze, input all the correct colors to go from one room to another. In the next room, you have to repair any damaged pods, input the code, and then you have a giant mech riding a strider coming in to attack you. He was too quickly on top of me and I couldn't get to my rakes, so I fought this guy from the sky, but it wasn't that bad at all. Finally, I took down the strider and shortly thereafter the mech, and once I was done, I made my way home, and that's when I spotted, for some reason, my Jenny was out. Ah, it's about time you got back. Please warmly welcome the return of I Legend. Sigunther? Is that you? You cannot be the real Krugrobs. We met over 50 years ago on a lost island. You look practically the same age. I needed to meet this imposter myself. Um, and apparently you had the world's most evil villain working as your assistant without even noticing. And I'm the suspicious one. Wait, Kruger, very few people knew what happened there. It is really you. It is. I've actually been stuck in a simulation all this time. Kruger, it's so good to see an old friend. 
I just needed to confirm this myself after the engineer told me he met you. See, Kruger? Ich traf Seisen viele Jahre, vor vielen Jahren. We often celebrated our victorious hunt at a local tavern. Seisen was always there, sitting in the corner drinking his sorrows away. Something about how he was mad at the world for losing his child. Well, we took him into the team. Hope that if we can give him a purpose again. Um, well, I mean, he has a purpose, all right. Destroying humanity, apparently. <laughs> and that is why he must be stopped. I never thought he would betray me like that. And that is why I'm here to help you hunt some more big game. Make whatever shotgun ammo you can. And meet me by the terminal. I have seen there's been a fluffy point that's bullied you around a bit. Morgan, we take it down. So early the next morning, I went to farm Velo's talk. Of course, I had to use the rig since my Giga was dead, but it got the job done and I was way too lazy to farm gunpowder. Finally, I had all that I needed, made the shotgun rounds, and once I was ready and armed up, I went to meet Sir Gunther. Ah, Kruger, good to have you here. Let's hunt some more big game. So I started up the mission. Sir Gunther, watch out. <laughs> you watch out. And we went tracking for the footsteps and still we saw the beast. I'm getting high. Hit it hard until it turns and runs. Oops, I missed the shot. We fired from the ledges and this was definitely a cheesy way to there get it go. done. Oh. Sometimes you don't bring Brixes to a gunfight as this was a lot easier. Let's a hunter gets a kill. Yes. Finally, nice. the Ferox was down, and shortly after, his remaining army. Oh, nice. Thanks for joining me on this hunt. Kruger, you need to venture to the other side. As the engineer told you, track down our informant. I wish you luck on your journey. So, after the few days of spending with Sir Gunther, I prepared everything I would need to get my hands on Shadow Mains. I then made my way over and dropped out my hover cell that I had gathered in a drop since tech suits were really not working here. The hover cell was absolutely an amazing way to move around. I just hoped that the goons wouldn't spot me as it definitely attracted a lot of attention. Finally I grabbed myself all the materials that I needed to construct some nets and catch myself a bunch of fish. Now this was definitely a tedious option and piranhas are complete assholes to try and catch. The next morning I spotted a 140 and I decided to engage and see how easy it is to tame them. So once you feed it you gotta make a run for it and make sure you don't get spotted by the shadow mane. And if you don't sneak up at the right angle you end up completely losing all your taming. So after abandoning this one I went to replenish all my fish. But that's when I spotted a male as well that was a 145, and trust me, bush hiding doesn't work on these guys. But finally, I had the rhythm under control and I knew exactly how to do it, and after a little bit of training, I was a well-oiled machine. I finally had a good momentum, and I started feeding continuously until the first shadow main was all tamed up. I then cryoed up the male and now it was time to go and grab the female. So continuous feeding, one after another and I got a bit worried when it got night time but luckily the game allowed me to tame one more. I then cryoed it up, hopped back on my hover cell to do some more awesome tricks but clearly I ended up attracting a lot of attention and the goons were on me. I, I didn't know what I had to do. I was officially about to be taken. Hey prisoner, up. What the hell? Where, where am I? What do you guys want? Come on, let me, let me out, please. Boss, we got him. <laughs> Excellent! Well, it's just that I'm in the middle of something right now, so let him enjoy one final meal and then bring him to me in the morning. Roger. You stay put. I mean, it wasn't like I could go anywhere. So I sat on the can and saw that one of the guards were acting a bit weird. So I made my way over and he threw packages through the window. Yes. 
and boy, this was going to come in handy. So I dropped down a few C4 and I thought of a plan to get the guards to come over. Um, guards, help, help, I don't, I, I don't feel so well. What is it? I, I, I don't know, I don't you feel well. You got diarrhea again? Yeah, no. Buddy, that doesn't look like diarrhea. Help me welcome our mysterious guest, the Axeman. Thanks for saving me. Uh, I'm assuming you're the cook? Well, that's my cover story. The name is Commander Axe, son of Commander Korg. I've been working as an informant to the Resistance, but we're not in the clear yet. We have a few hours before the next patrol and we need to get the hell out of here. Commander Korg? Wait, I knew your father. Actually, I was in the Jaeger program back on Earth. Yeah, he told me about you. The noob that took 10 gigas to fight the King Titan? <laughs> um, yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, whatever happened to him, though? He was working under the command of Captain Noah. I believe shortly after you all met, they were called away to start working on this ship. He told me to tell you, you're in the endgame now. You're going to need to complete all the missions, as it will help him lock Sizen fully out of the ship controls. Wait, is the captain still actually alive? For now, Captain Noah is very old. He knows the secrets on how to defeat Sizen. He is also the keeper of the time machine. But before he will reveal his location to you, you need to prove you are worthy. You're going to have to complete all the missions. They are designed to test survivors to their limits. Once you've completed them all, he will make himself known. Now go. I've got to cover all this up to look like you escaped, or my cover's going to be blown. Thanks, Commander. I'm sure your father is very proud of the work that you've done and that you'll continue to do. Krieger, that means a lot. So after that, I put on all my gear and I made my way back to base. It was already the start of day 76, so I continued with a whole bunch of breeding so I could get my lines ready for the massive fight that lied ahead. I also started breeding up some shadow mains, but I kept getting males, but at least their stats weren't that bad. And of course, those that don't have the stats, you know what we do to them. They become our XP farms. Finally, I spent the rest of the day going after some more loot crates and continued all the breeding in between grabbing loot crates. This was pretty much the process over the next few days. That is until I spotted this giant gator and since I still needed some more firepower, this guy was definitely something that I wanted. So I grabbed myself everything I would need to trap him up and went searching for him. Finally, I tracked him down went to the ground and placed down the trap, then shot him to get his aggro and slowly lured him into the bear trap, dropped closely behind and placed the last billboard. Finally I was able to start knocking him out and he went down in no time. I then threw out one of my overs and his sacrifice would definitely not go in vain. I then fed the mutton and shortly after he tamed up and I named him Harvey. I then claimed some more babies hunted some more drops and got a pretty cool shotgun and spotted this amazing acro and this time I was determined to grab it. So after claiming some more babies I made all the shotgun rounds that I needed and went over to the same trap that I used for Neptune. I then got the acro's attention using one of the shadow mains and lured him in. This time I was determined to get one. So I popped myself some rare flowers in the hope to keep the acro's attention on me and this plan definitely seemed to be working. It was doing the least damage and finally I had the acro in her defensive stance. I kept shooting her on the legs and finally I got that roar I so long desired for and I was able to feed her narcotics. And after a lot of rinse and repeat, he finally went down and I was about to have my very own acro. I then threw out another overs and when I was about to shoot it, it disappeared. And I was definitely worried that it might wake up before I got back with more mutton. So I chopped up the mutton as quick as I could and made my way back, but I saw that his unconsciousness doesn't drain that quickly. And finally by the morning of day 80, I had my first acro and named her Karen. Once I was back at base, I was finally happy to see I had female shadow mains. I also tested out the roar of Karen and boy was she amazing. 
I then grabbed up Harvey and made my way to do Code Red Beta. I thought he might be amazing since he's immune to flame damage and does a bleed effect. So I fought through all the defense units, protected some pods, ran for my life. And finally reached the Giga. I also wanted to reload my shotgun, but this made Harvey sit down. So, um, buddy, you need to wake up. This is no time to sit. Finally, I had him up, but the Giga was right on us and I wasn't able to get on top of him. So I shot a grapple in the air in the hope that I could get up, but I ended up dying before I was victorious. And now I was left without my tech suit. So I had to run my way back home and I even got robbed on the way there. Luckily I recovered my loot, made my way back, grabbed one of my glider suits and glided to get a new tech suit. I then farmed up a ton of metal so that I could refix my gear and on day 83 I was back with a Rex this time in the hope that this would do the job. This time I managed to zipline to the top and I shot my little heart away with my shotgun that I thought was OP but I just couldn't deal enough damage in the time that was there. So feeling completely hopeless, having some absolute deja vu and having to run back all the way yet again, once I reached my base I saw a little package for me from Engineer McDonald. So I had a quick look inside and I saw a radio with a message on as well as some strange pistol. So I listened to the voicemail. I see you have been struggling with some of these missions. They've been designed for much more advanced weaponry than what you are used to. I can help. This is a prototype gun I've been working on. It's called a phase pistol. It has the abilities to either deal damage, heal or stun. The fuel source is element. Hope this helps. So armed with my very new pistol and still without tech gear, I had to start gliding yet again to try and locate a drop so I could get a new suit yet again. After grabbing an XP note, I also finally spotted a loot drop, had a new tech suit and I made my way into space since it was purple drops. That meant element. After farming the entire day, I had all the Ellie that I needed. I fixed up all my gear and I was back to take down the Giga yet another time. This time I used a shadow main, hopping across all the obstacles into the little cubby and I got a bit smarter as I ziplined to the top and this pistol absolutely shredded through him. So I knew I would be able to take down Alpha next. So I started up the mission, hopped over all the nasties and made my way into the defense unit terminal. Now these guys were a lot stronger on Alpha, they were just not going down and they were absolutely wrecking my armor in just a few shots. I had another big brain moment as I used my zipline, ran around to get their aggro away from me and then I ziplined to the top. Now they were all sitting ducks. This was honestly like shooting fish in a barrel, it worked amazingly. Finally, I was able to test out the pistol on them as well, had all of them taken care of and ran down to my shadow main. Now I just needed to protect some biobots. The problem was, these guys were not merciful at all. They were doing so much damage and I really didn't think I was gonna make it. But with a little bit of grain of health, I was able to reach the next terminal. And now, on Alpha, this was definitely going to be one of the biggest runs for my life. Just one poop in the face and I would be a goner for sure. And somehow I managed to make it through. Finally, I was back at facing the Giga, hopped into my little cubby, ziplined to the top and now I was able to rain down my tech pistol and successfully complete the mission. But that's when I realized my time was really starting to run out. I had my mutated Rexes ready, 
but my shadow mains were still far from being good enough. So I spent the next few days starting to work on those melee mutations and finally got one. So I took all the redundant ones out of the breeding line and while I waited for some more to raise up, I decided to run some more missions. So first up was life support on beta. Finally I had the mech and strider out and I was able to rain down with my shotgun until my bullets ran out. But luckily I had my fabby on me and between the rex and my fabby we were able to get the mech taken down. I was starting to really run through all the last remaining missions. I then grabbed myself a ton of gunpowder, replenished all my bullets, fixed up all my gear and continued breeding in between. Finally I fixed all the broken gear and I was ready to run yet another mission after giving my Rex an awesome paint job. It was time for life support on Alpha. I finally made it into the final room and I was still feeling confident. I wanted to leave my Rex to do all the damage while I used my new pistol to take down the Mech and Strider. But definitely it was a mistake to take down the Strider first because the Mech was doing some serious damage and now he was fully focused on me. And his hits were definitely powerful. I dropped down to drink some Med Brews and then somehow I just randomly failed the mission. But I re-geared and made it back after learning from my mistakes. This time I would focus the make first and once I have him taken out, this Strider would be an absolute piece of cake. <laughs> that now just left me with two more missions on both Beta and Alpha. So next up was choose your own adventure. So I completed my color puzzle, ran through the allocated rooms, And after stepping on all the panels, I was ready to fight it yet again. At this point, I was nearly max level, so having all the movement speed that I did, and not too bad of a shotgun, this mission was not bad at all. As long as you're cautious, as long as you're taking care not to step on the wrong panels, it's pretty easy to get done. I then re-geared and got ready for Alpha. After completing the puzzle rooms, grabbing the last keys and entering the final stage of the fight. I was a bit worried on my time as I knew I needed about 20 minutes when I entered the stage, but I was gonna make every second count. I was showing no mercy and going absolute haywire on the summoners. That is until I land into a little bit of trouble. But luckily I was able to recover and this time I came up with a bit of an idea. I would get my glider suit and focus mid air to try and shoot the summoners. So now at least I was away from all the ground enemies and this was working amazingly. But somehow the spiders still managed to shoot me out of the air and now it was a run against time to get back to the next jumping pad. I managed to get myself up in the air, make a little turn around and take down the final small summoner and now I just had to go to town on the big boy himself. I was so close. I wasn't gonna give up now. I knew I had this one in the bag. And finally I had it taken out. That left just two more missions. So time to repair all my gear and survive the arc, you've guessed it. 
Now, of course, beta I'm gonna do solo. I mean, I know that's at least possible. But when it comes to alpha, I'm definitely gonna bring in some reinforcements. So I turned myself into a melee bob with some movement speed and I focused on getting a ton of aloes and I would just take out all the flyers and have the aloes take down all the dinos on the ground. My strategy seemed like it was working, although at the very end, three aloes were clearly just not cutting it, but I wasn't gonna let this oversized chicken kill me. So after running out of time, repairing my gear, I came back with even more aloes the next time, as I had enough credits to buy another six. I slowly brought them in, two packs at a time, and finally, we were getting this guy down to his final breaths. And down he went. Now it's time for Alpha, but of course, I have to call in a friend. Yo, Kruger, what the fuck are you doing here, mate? Commander sent me here, but I didn't think we'll be ready for doing this, mate. So the melee bobs that we were started with beer, grabbed some pistols, and took care of all the flyers. I want to get in the corner. We knew that nice. once we can make it through to get tech bows, oh, things are going to go a lot easier. So the first two waves are truly the hardest. We finally had some good momentum. And we decided after aberration, it would be time to upgrade our guns. And out came the tech bows. And boy, was I accurate with this bow. Well, yeah, let's go that dragon. This is after nearly five attempts of this thing. Finally, we made it to the final stage and we had credits to spare. So we brought in our army of aloes, but they were getting shredded so quickly. On our final one, we managed to get the dodo super close, and with one more arrow, he got taken down. So I teleported back home, but I ended up in a strange location. Kruger, it's about time you got here. My body is very old and weak, and my responses to you will be limited. I'm assuming you're Captain Noah. Why are we here? Why are you here? Kruger, that is a question that will take too long to answer. Alright, fine. Uh, is this where you keep the time machine? How does it work? Yeah, yes it is. It's a very complicated device and it allows the users to stay back in time. But the neural load is heavy. You cannot keep your current memories when you change timelines. So you cannot take the knowledge of the future and try and change the past. I've tried it and I believe I've failed this many times. Why does everyone believe I can finish this? Why me? Everyone is putting the weight of the world on my shoulders and I just don't get it. The baby you have come to learn about. I believe you are connected in some way, form or another. And I believe it's the reason Sizen is trying to track down that baby. It is his weakness. The only one stopping him. I mean... No father can kill his own child. Are you that baby? I don't, I don't know. But the time travel I have done has caused a lot of destruction in my mind. It might. I'm not sure. So how can I stop Sizen once and for all? Kruger, this exoskeleton that I use is the last remaining of the Jaeger program. It has the blast power enough to end the life of Sizen. But it will come at a heavy cost, as it's the main device I use to keep my body alive. Will I even be able to use it? See Kruger, that's the confusing part. My scanners say our DNA are an exact match, so I believe so. And with that, Captain Noah teleported me back. And it was time for me to do my final preps. I did see it was white drops and that means I could grab the final mutagel that I need to make the mutagen needed for the boss fight. So by that evening I had all of it ready and I started leveling up my shadow mains by killing all the runs. One by one my army was coming together but I still remembered that I needed to tame two more additional creatures to complete my goal. So I knocked out a Suko Minus, and when I dropped down to catch my breath, another weird thingy came to attack me. 
So I knocked it out and tamed it up as well and finally reached my goal of taming 10 additional creatures and then I got another phone call. Krieger, Krieger, stand by. Um, Krieger up standing by. Krieger, there's not much time. I've been made. Commander, no, uh, get out of there then. Don't worry about me. Krieger, they know you're coming to fight Sizen. They've set traps and doubled patrols in the tunnel. It's pointless, Kruger. You won't make it through them all. Tunnels? Um, what tunnels? The way to Sizen. I've blown the front gates. You have a clear path now to the heart of Sizen himself. There he is. Get him! Commander? Are you there? Commander! It seemed like the commander had given his life, and now it was time for my army to end the wrath of Sizen, as I named all of them after my discord members, so if you see your name, be sure to comment down below. I finally finished up cryoing up the entire army, grabbed all the remaining gear that I needed and I made my way over to the front gates. And clearly, the commander had done a lot of damage and I was able to make my way inside. There were still some patrols lurking, so Sizen was clearly not done with trying to stop me. But at this point, I was tired of these goons. One way or another, I'm taking this man down, as I started fighting my way through the inners. Seeing this many defenses definitely told me that Sizen was at his most vulnerable, and I had to fight with everything that I had. Finally, I made it to the final chamber and I started to hear the heartbeat of Sizen himself. I snuck to a nearby corner and I tried to take down the final goons. One by one they started falling. And finally I had them all taken out and I had a clear shot to his heart. But then I heard footsteps. Ha, <laughs> we've got you now. Ha <laughs> ha, come on. Walk over the edge, Sven. Your friends can't help you anymore. They're all dead. I ain't got friends. I've got family. Baker, you were just in time. Thanks for saving me. Now go kill Sizen. I'll hold any more goons trying to make it here. Well do, brother. Let's do this for all of our fallen friends and end this once and for all. This is where you fall to your knees just like the other ones. Oh, please. I don't want to die, etc, etc. Go on, beg and plead. I promise I won't think any less of you. I mean, honestly, with those beady little eyes and that slack jaw. And I'm afraid it's far too late for you to try scurrying back, back out again. Probably wise to let the way up to with his knowledge. Oh, you're one to talk. How long has your last puppet here even been thawed on? <laughs> Your weapons are pitiful against me. You are nothing but an ant trying to bite at the toes of a god. This model comes from a famous that just happens to interface with yours too. My juice. Ooh, I almost felt that one. You're only making it worse for yourselves. Get. 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 Get.
Ah, just who do you think you are? You're vermin, rodents, nipping at my ankles. You really couldn't just cooperate and die. Not you, no. You insist on surviving and making a nuisance of yourself. Now that we've arrived at the threshold of my new dominion, I can afford to give you my undivided attention. And this, this is where your little game comes to an end. I'm all over this ship now, and I can't be destroyed. Certainly not by the likes of you. Generations put all their hopes and dreams into this mission. Enough! This ends now, and you, your survival, end here! Alright, I'm using all my reserves. The ExoNet is back online, one last time. Get in, blast the bugger, and let's end this survival. I'd better start that rig separation sequence now. You know, just in case this doesn't, uh, work. Damn, I should have calculated for this possibility. I must have missed a transform on the 15th statistical outcome matrix. Sorry, mate. I can't come with. And I'm almost out of time to back myself up. You'll do just fine when you're out there. You're a survivor. Kruger! Wait, stop. I need to tell you something. That baby. My son. It was you. Kruger. I am your father. What he had just said didn't make any sense. But the ship was about to blow up. Things couldn't end like this. I, I needed to use the time machine. I needed to find out who I really am. Warning. Emergency evacuation in progress. And with that, I had jumped back in time. And I slowly saw all my memories fading in front of my eyes. As I passed through the galaxy, I didn't know what time zone I was going to. I just knew I needed to find answers. As I woke up on a mysterious beach, not knowing where I was, not knowing when I was, I had a look in the water and that's when I saw the reflection. I was Captain Noah all along. <laughs>